define database management system in a nice way. Aravind. Aravind. Gohul. Gohul. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Can you define a database or a database management system? Uh, database is a collection of uh, relatable data, sir. It's a collection of related data. Yes, sir. And a set of uh, programs acting on those data. Will be database management. Right. Uh, so, how do you define a database management system? So, DBMS is a software that is used to define, construct, and manipulate a database. Right. So, we are going to study a course on DBMS. So, what's the objective of any commercial database management system? Kiran Reddy. Kiran. So what is the objective of any commercial uh, database management system? Right, anyone? To be fast. Wrong. Efficient so do you mean application? So what, is the, uh, like what is the objective of any uh, database management system? Being efficient and easy to use. Right. Uh, we are feature be software. able to store and retrieve to the, store and get back retrieve the information. Right. So Suganda Prasad and Saloni, right? Uh, so good. So right. So as I said that uh, the objective of any uh, commercial database management system is to store and retrieve the data in an efficient manner. Right. So we study this course. Uh, right the objective is to store the data right how to store the data in some repository as well as how to retrieve the data efficiently from the repository right so that's the objective of this course right so database is a collection of related data right so for example uh, student the details are going to be student id name age date of birth address and so on so it contains a collection of uh, related data, the set of programs that acts on the data. So DBMS is a software that is used to define a database. So define means you will be uh, defining the schema of the database, construct a database. So construct means will be performing insert operation, delete operation or update operation and uh, add records in a database or update records in a database. And finally, manipulate a database, right? So DBMS is a software that is used to define, construct, and manipulate a database. So manipulating means we'll be uh, applying some select operator, get the results from a table or a relation. We'll apply some aggregate operation, uh, aggregate operators on the relation and so on, right? So this thing you need to know, the objective of any uh, database management system is to store and retrieve the data in an uh, efficient manner. Right. So that's a key point that you need to have it in your mind. Right. So then, uh, right. So last class, we discussed some uh, some applications of uh, database management system. Right. So database is uh, used in our day to day uh, activities. Right. So whenever you make some uh, purchase in an online store or in a supermarket, right, they store the customer's information. Right. So whenever you buy something in an online store, customer information is being stored in a uh, uh, database. Similarly, the product information will be uh, stored in a database. And we have some, whenever you perform a transaction, right? Whenever you purchase some items in a uh, transaction, again, uh, the transaction will contain the details of the, it will contain some unique transaction ID and it will contain the details of the person or the customer who made the purchase and the list of items uh, that he brought it in a transaction, right? 
so databases used in our day-to-day -day applications for uh, reservation railway reservation flight reservation or booking a resort or a hotel right so wherever uh, we uh, need to store some data and retrieve data we go for a database management system right so uh, we have a lot of commercial database management systems available right so microsoft they have microsoft sql uh, server ibm they have db2 so we have oracle from oracle corporation right then we discussed about uh, the limitations of file processing system right so initially people were using a file processing system to store the data and retrieve the data so we have some limitations in uh, file processing system right so i want uh, one of you to get the limitations right so what do you mean by uh, data redundancy and uh, data inconsistency hari so, rahul so what do you mean by data sir, redundancy? yeah when data is duplicated uh, it's called data redundancy right and what do you mean by data inconsistency Um, so I'm not really sure. Right. So whenever you have multiple copies of the data, they do not agree. We call it as uh, data inconsistency. Right. So for example, I have your contact number. Uh, once you have uh, joined this institution, and over a period of time, you have uh, changed your contact number, and you have given some new contact number to me, and I have stored it in a file. Right. So the thing is that uh, if I have multiple contact number. Of your particular student which may not uh, be the same right so then it leads to data inconsistency right so whenever i have multiple copies of the same data that do not agree it's known as data uh, inconsistency right so data redundancy is duplication of data so once you duplicate once you have duplication of data then it leads to a lot of uh, storage cost and again uh, multiple copies of the same data that do not agree it re results in data inconsistency and in database management system we have something called primary key we ensure that each and every record is uh, uh, not duplicated by means of a primary key right like a customer will have customer id or a transaction will have some transaction id to uniquely identify a particular transaction that has been done in an online store so that uh, uh later on when you edit a particular transaction also the thing is that uh, we'll be able to uh, avoid data redundancy and uh, data inconsistency right so here i think the important topics that we discussed was that uh, data redundancy and data inconsistency then uh, we studied something about uh, enforcing uh, constraints enforcing integrity constraints so what do you mean by uh, enforcing integrity constraints? Mittal, Rithik Mittal, what do you mean by uh, enforcing integrity constraints? Gautam, Sitar. Gautam. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm not sure about I don't know. You are not uh, sure about it, right? Uh, so integrity constraints means, uh, for example, uh, we enforce some constraints in a uh, yeah, course, right? So a yeah, student should score above 50 percentage marks to qualify for a yeah, uh, particular uh, examination, right? So similarly, uh, right? So I can store only character data type in a yeah, name, right? So these are some examples of. Uh, integrity constraints right so for example you have an account in a bank the bank may have a lot of integrity constraints in your account it should it can say that the minimum account balance should be greater than a thousand rupees right so you should be a major to operate your uh, account right so the thing is that uh, enforcing constraints integrity constraints is quite easier in the case of a database management system whereas uh, it's difficult to enforce constraints in the case of uh, a file processing system right so you can enforce one or two constraints but if you have many constraints then uh, managing uh, integrated constraints then uh, we discuss something called atomicity problem right so i want one of you to explain the atomicity problem uh, 
So who is good in explaining atomicity problem? So can I go? Yeah, good. If someone comes to volunteer, uh, if someone volunteers, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So the operations must be atomic, which is not the case in file systems. So that essentially means that either the operation should fully happen, or if some error happens, then it should fully not happen. So for example, if you are taking uh, five hundred from some bank and then giving it back to another account, so if one operation fails, then it becomes inconsistent, right? So either it should like both retrieving and giving back should happen, or neither should happen. Right, uh, right, uh, Saloni. Uh, so, which place are you from? Gujarat, sir. Uh, very good. Right, uh, right. So, like uh, computer is an uh, uh, electromechanical device, and it's subject to failure, right? So, when I trans, whenever you perform a transaction, uh, right? So, for example, you perform your transaction, you are going to pay your uh, electricity bill. So, amount is debited from your account, and uh, the amount debited is being credited into the electricity board account right so uh, we have different types of failures right so computers they are sub subject to failure right so we have different types of failure like uh, software failure hardware failure network failure right uh, power failure and so on so what happens the money is debited from the user account and uh, before crediting into the uh, electricity board account there is a failure so what happens is that money will be lost and it results in an inconsistent state of your database right so this should not happen so a transaction should occur completely or not at all right so a transaction should occur completely or not at all that's the atomicity property so if someone is deb debited from an account it should be credited into the electricity board account right while you pay your electricity bill so the transaction should occur completely or completely or not at all so this can be enforced in uh, uh, database management system whereas uh, it's difficult to enforce uh, atomicity uh, problem in the case of uh, it is very difficult to overcome atomicity problem in the case of file processing system right then we discuss something about concurrent access anomaly problem right so what do you mean by concurrent access anomaly problem Right. So one of you can explain. Sir, can I go ahead or? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so the concurrency problem is when, if you have, for example, like a department and you want to access, and maybe two people in that same department want to debit the money. Uh, so we don't like, at, at the end, we might have like both the money debited while in reality, the guy only debited once. So that might cause an error in the bank statement. Right. So, right. More than one user, they try to debit the account at the same time, and someone yeah. is uh, reading the value of the account uh, that is being present in that particular account. Right. Uh, so yes, the thing sir. is that uh, to improve the throughput of the system, uh, we uh, to improve the throughput or performance of the system, we allow multiple users to perform uh, transactions at a particular time. Right. So multiple users can perform transactions. Uh, at a particular time, right? So, for example, in uh, we should allow multiple uh, students uh, spread across different geographical locations to pay their tuition fees at a time. And similarly, we'll be passing uh, multiple bills to different vendors who are associated with uh, NIT Thirchi, who supply computers or uh, uh, who supply some uh, 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 stationary uh, items to NIT Thirchi to uh, right. Uh, to debit their bills right so the thing is that uh, to improve the throughput of the system we allow multiple users to be active at a particular time and access a particular account so what happens in uh, concurrent access anomaly is that uh, right so if more than one user tries to access the same access the account at the same time and performs uh, uh, debit operation or credit operation it should not result in an uh, inconsistent state right so it's very difficult to it's very difficult to enforce uh, concurrent access uh, anomaly right uh, it is very difficult to uh, enforce this concurrent access uh, problems in the case of file processing system whereas in the case of database management system we have something called uh, log based protocols which we will study in some unit for in transaction management uh, we ensure that uh, they even they look parallelly 
the transactions look parallelly the transactions are inherently they execute sequentially one after another without any conflicts right so we need to ensure that uh, each transaction is executed independent of the other transaction and uh, each transaction acting on a particular account is unaware of the other transactions that is uh, done on the same account right so uh, we can avoid concurrent access anomaly we have some concurrency control manager component in database management system that takes care of this uh, problem and uh, it avoids this uh, concurrent access anomaly whereas it's very difficult to avoid concurrent access anomaly problem in the case of uh, database management system sorry in the case of file processing system it's very difficult to avoid concurrent access anomaly problem right then i think the important topic that we discussed was uh, views or database security data security right so so one of you can explain uh, how security is enforced in uh, database management system yeah. uh, so can i go ahead yes yes so uh, in in a database like if you if you need to give some specific roles to the user they they should access only a specific part of the database and not everything so right. for that uh, it is only possible in a database and it's not possible in a file uh, processing system so right right uh, subramaniam right uh, so different users will be given a different perspective view of the same database in the case of uh, database management system <coughs> right so once the dean academic office they publish their uh, results publish your uh, academic results right so people will be accessing the same database but different users will be given a different perspective view of the same database so this is possible this this, this, there, so there is a possibility to enforce database security in the case of uh, database management system whereas uh, it is very difficult to enforce uh, security of data in the case of uh, file processing system right so in databases we have uh, views or virtual tables whereby we will be able to give a different perspective view of the same database to different types of users <coughs> right so, uh, so in addition to this uh, important points, we discuss something about data isolation. So in the case of file processing system, uh, data is spread across uh, multiple files and uh, files may be in different formats. So again, the data, data in the database is created over a period of time. So it's very difficult to access uh, legacy files, right? So that's the problem in the case of uh, file processing system. Whereas in the case of uh, DBMS, uh, right? we have uh, program data independence. So program data independence means uh, data is stored uh, separately from the uh, uh, application programs that access the data, right? So finally, I would like to add on the point, uh, difficulty in retrieving the data in the case of uh, file processing system, right? So file processing system, you have uh, your data file embedded on the application program that access the data. So whenever you make uh, changes to the uh, data file, right you need to change the application program that access it right so for example uh, uh, clerk in an uh, university he wants to generate report of the students uh, who have got more than uh, 60 percentage in a particular course right so he needs to write a program application program to generate a report right so over a period of time uh, he needs to retrieve the students uh, who have got more than 60 percentage in only uh, a specific branch again he needs to rewrite the program to generate a different report right so the thing is that uh, it's very difficult to retrieve the data in the case of uh, conventional file processing system whereas uh, in the case of database management system we have some program data independence right so it's very difficult to so it's very easy to retrieve the data it's easy to generate report uh, reports in the case of uh, database management system right uh, right so so let us uh, start today's class uh, right uh, uh, i will uh, Right. So in today's class, I uh, will study about data abstraction. Uh, so basically, we'll study about uh, uh, 
the different the three schema architecture of your database will study about uh, physical schema logical schema and uh, a view level of your database right so so what do you mean by uh, physical schema right so physical schema means uh, it deals with uh, how the data is uh, internally stored in the database right 